Hi everyone, welcome back to Nanome. I wanted to use this opportunity today to talk about the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is a series of receptors, ligands that activate those receptors, and enzymes that break down those ligands that activate the receptors inside of our brain and our body. And the whole critical role of the endocannabinoid system is to mediate these larger scale body functions like body temperature, pain perception, things like appetite or feeding, and even things like sex drive. So I wanted to first talk about the receptors that are within the endocannabinoid system, which are going to be cannabinoid type 1 receptor and cannabinoid type 2 receptor. I will note that these are also the receptors that THC binds to in order to produce the intoxicating like high that you get from using cannabis. So let's look at CB1 receptor. So in here in front of us is the cannabinoid type 1 receptor that I've talked about in other of my videos. And this receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. And it also sits on a plasma membrane on the surface of a cell. As we can see here in the middle of the receptor, we have a ligand bound. This ligand actually is an agonist, which when binds to the receptor, activates the receptor. What we'll see is that in terms of the endogenous ligands that your body naturally produces to activate the receptor, they actually also bind to this orthosteric binding site, which seems to be in the middle of the receptor in order to activate it. So with further ado, let's take a look at the ligands that activate or bind to this receptor to turn them on, so to speak. This first endogenous ligand that activates the receptor is known as anandamide. Anandamide is a Sanskrit word, which means bliss or bliss molecule. So, this receptor seems to bind to and activate CB1 receptor. Um, but there's also another endogenous ligand that binds to and activates the receptor to mediate, it, mediate its effects. And that is going to be the other endogenous ligand, which is 2-AG or 2-arachidonylglycerol. Now that we have both of the molecules next to each other, we can kind of compare and contrast them. What we could notice is that both of these molecules are uh, fatty acids. They have this fatty acid chain. They both have the same amount of carbons up until this point right here, in which 2-AG has an ester functional group, okay, coming off of the carbon, and, to, and anandamide has an amide functional group coming off of the carbon. And the only other difference here is that we have on the 2-AG, we have a dialcohol, Okay, one alcohol here, one alcohol here, whereas anandamide only has one of these alcohol groups. So these are the two endogenous ligands that our body synthesizes in order to bind to and activate CB1 receptor in order to mediate its effects inside of the brain and the body. I will, however, say that um, anandamide binds to CB1 with better binding affinity than to arachidonoglycerol, but both do uh, act as agonists at the CB1 receptor. So uh, with further ado, let's take a look at how these things, these endogenous ligands, bind to CB1 receptor. So this is the docked pose of anandamide bound to CB1 receptor. And I remember when I first learned about uh, anandamide and looking at its structure, I really thought, how the heck is a molecule with that many carbons, that long of a carbon chain, going to fit inside the orthosteric pocket of CB1 receptor? But as we can see, it kind of contorts itself into a bended uh, snake-like structure in order to fit inside that orthosteric binding site, which I think is really, which I think is really unique and cool. As uh, many fatty acids have these long hydrocarbon chains, you might think they're hard to fit inside the orthosteric binding sites, but you know, they can they can really snake their way in there, so to speak, by contorting themselves. And we can see this as a glide score of negative 7.7 .7, uh, kilocals per mole. If we compare that to, to arachidonoglycerol, for one second, I'm just gonna overlay the binding poses, okay? For one second, I'll just kind of overlay the binding poses to in fact see that although these 
compounds do, in fact, both bind to CB1 receptor, the orthosteric site, they actually fit inside the receptor with different conformations. And the difference in conformations is likely due to one of them has an amide functional group and the other one has um, an ester functional group. And the amount of carbon sources seem to contort itself into different positions. What I will kind of want to notice is that, in fact, if you look at the glide scores here, um, anandamide actually shows it preferentially um, more negative or better fitting uh, more negative score inside CB1 receptor than 2-arachidonoglycerol, which kind of makes sense because the affinity of anandamide to CB1 receptor is about 70 nanomolar, whereas 2-AG has very poor affinity to CB1 receptor, somewhere in the ag magnitude of 10,000 nanomolar, um, but both activate the receptor as agonist. So then if we take away anandamide, we can see the docked pose of 2-arachidonoglycerol by itself. Once again, this sort of bends inside the receptor like a snake to fit inside the orthosteric binding pocket. So now that we've looked at the receptors of the endocannabinoid system, CB1, CB2 receptor, to be fair, we didn't look at CB2 receptor, but the sequence homology of CB2 receptor is very similar to CB1, so they almost look identical. So we looked at the receptors uh, within the endocannabinoid system. We looked at the two endogenous ligands that activate the um, endocannabinoid system. Now let's look at the enzymes that break down anandamide into arachidonoglycerol. What we have here is the first enzyme that breaks down endocannabinoids. This specifically is called FA or fatty acid amidhydrolase. And this enzyme specifically breaks down anandamide. So if you could imagine, anandamide molecule comes into the active site of the receptor, which is located right here. Then usually in the active site among these types of hydrolases, there is a catalytic triad that consists of three amino acids that will use organic chemistry to act on one of the functional groups that will split the molecule into two pieces. And the splitting of that molecule into two pieces will render it inactive it can then get recycled and reused to make more anandamide. The only reason there's a crystal structure of fatty acid amide hydrolase, or FA, is that people have developed FA inhibitors. So basically a drug like this one, which is a FA inhibitor, that will bind to the active site of FA so that anandamide can't bind. And if we bind a drug to the active site of this enzyme which breaks down anandamide, we're going to boost anandamide levels in the brain. And there are a few drugs that are actually uh, undergoing experimentation for therapeutics that are FA inhibitors. And these things could be used for things like depression and fear extinction. So let's look at the other enzyme that breaks down endocannabinoids. This is the other enzyme that breaks down endocannabinoids. This one specifically is called uh, MAGO or monoacyl glycerol lipase, and it selectively breaks down 2-arachidonoglycerol. So sort of the same story. 2-AG would come into the active site located right here, and there's usually a catalytic triad that'll use organic chemistry to work on one of the functional groups in order to cleave 2-arachidonoglycerol into 2 uh, pieces which will render inactive, which can then be used to resynthesize to to arachidonoglycerol and be reused inside of the body and the brain. But what's interesting, I suppose, about these two structures is that really, um, when you talk about tertiary protein structure, you talk about alpha helices and beta sheets. And in red, these are all different al alpha helices inside of the um, inside of the enzyme. And then in yellow are the classic beta sheets that you would see in biochemistry. So in a sense, what we've gone over in this video is the endocannabinoid system. And we said that the endocannabinoid system in summary is comprised of, comprised of three parts. Two receptors, CB1 and CB2. Two endogenous ligands that your body synthesizes to bind to those receptors, which were anandamide and 2-arachidonoglycerol. And then third, we had the two enzymes that broke down those ligands that bound to the receptors to activate them. And those were 
Mano Isol Kosoro Y Place Maggle. And the other one was Fa or Fatty Acid Amid Hydroids. In the next video, we could kind of talk about um, how THC might bind to CB1 receptor um, and activate it instead of the endogenous uh, cannabinoids or endogenous ligands. And with that being said, I hope you learned a little bit about the endocannabinoid system from this video. Till next time, stay curious. Bye.